What is going on, Nissan Nation? It's your buddy Dave of the Nissan Nation podcast, and we have in front of us a 2020 Nissan Versa. This is the SR package, so it is loaded. This little car has everything you probably want in a full-size car. This car, Apple CarPlay, Killer Infotainment Center. The the radio in this thing is amazing. The, the safety of this car is, is second to none. Nissan's really went out of their way to, uh, to put a nice safety package in it. This has their Safety Shield 360, and it's been useful driving through town. I, I will admit, I was a little skeptical with, with all the, the features that this car does, and once you get in it, it's it's kind of a game changer. These these cars with uh, the self-braking and stuff, it takes a little bit to get used to, but once you get used to it in, uh, in maybe highway traffic, it is a game changer. So, let's break this thing down. Let's look at the notes that Nissan sent us. This is the all-new third generation Versa, and it, they're gonna say it's an expressive exterior styling and fresh interior design. What does that mean? It's a new car. <laughs> That's what that means exactly. Um, they went through top to bottom redesigned this thing. So the the previous verses, they were a little bland, a little dull. I mean, they were commuter cars. You, if you've watched mine on the, the Centro, you know, you know what I, I think of these little cars generally. They are a commuter car, but a commuter car doesn't have to be boring. A commuter car can be exciting and fun and something that when you're, you know, whether you be at your local Walmart or wherever and you pull up, you get out and you turn your head and you go, hey, that's my car. And for the price of these cars, starting out at $14,000, it's nuts. And you can still get a five-speed manual transmission into the lower packages. That, to me, is crazy because, you know, I, I hear you where you at, where you at, uh, manual transmission nation. You can still get it in this car. And could there be a little fun down there? Could you take this and make this a little tuner? I haven't seen many of them, but that's not to say you couldn't and have a little bit of fun in it. Uh, let's see, so you've got the uh, 1.6 liter four cylinder engine and this thing is rated at 122 horsepower. That may not sound like a lot, but this thing is light. It's very nimble. Um, after driving it for a week or so, I've, I've been impressed with the, the power of this car. It, it's no longer the days of, of you push the gas, you pull out in front of traffic, you push the gas and you sort of like cross your fingers like, will this car get me out of the way in time? This car actually does it. I've been very impressed with it. Uh, as you know, we're going to give you an honest opinion of these vehicles. I, I, even though we are the Nissan Nation podcast, we still want our uh, our fans to know that what we say matters. So, let's jump into this car and uh, see what makes it tick. Like I was saying before, the days of uh, boring cars are kind of gone. Uh, I think everybody understands that if you're going to, no matter what price point, if you're going to build a car, it has to look nice. And Nissan's really done this, especially with the SR trim. The SR trim is the highest trim they offer in, in this little car. And as you can see, it's well worth it. You're getting a lot of nice nice stitching. You'll, you know, just it's very sporty. This particular model, you get an actual armrest with some some storage. We will, we'll go into that a little later. You're getting push button start, the infotainment center. You're getting a nice seven inch screen that's that they've really stepped up. They've, they've offered this before in like the Titan that we reviewed, but the the graphics of this are so much nicer. They've really stepped it up. And I think I think as all manufacturers go go to this, you're gonna start seeing the in the lower cars like this and they're, and they're really gonna improve and make the graphics really nice. So you're getting a nice kind of sporty feel to the steering wheel. Uh, you know, a little flat bottom, that's pretty cool. A lot of little cool uh, quirks and features to this car. So let's jump into it. Heated seats. This car, this particular car has shown is 21,400, I believe is the, the price, but you're getting heated seats with that. That used to be something that 80 to $90,000 cars would get. Uh, push button starts, another thing. I love push button start. How I'll ever go without push button start, is beyond me. Uh, my Titan has it. And I love it. Every time I get into my Frontier, it's like, oh, we get into our older Xterra. It's like, I gotta push a key in the ignition. But so also, I love the the dash layout. So I'm a big I'm big on vents. I love dash vents, and I like when they they work properly. Sometimes you'll get them, and and they just I don't know. No matter where you turn them, you just can't can't seem to get the position that you want it. I love. This you've seen, I've seen it in older cars, Nissan used to do this some, but I love the little turn, the turn of this. For some reason, it just, it appeals to me. Plus it looks sporty, you get the nice, nice kind of uh, uh, aluminum trim looking to it. Uh, a couple things that I, I think are kind of silly to this car, they wanted to, because it is a sport trim, they wanted to do sort of a carbon fiber look to the, the handles. It's, it's something I've found in Nissan in the past, they like, they always 
find one way to not screw up anything, but they always find this one thing that doesn't seem to fit the car. If this would have just been black or they could have done this in the aluminum trim, it would have been super amazing. It would, and I think it would have fit the sports theme of this car a little bit better. Um, it does tie into the, the outside of it a little bit, so I can't completely crap on it, but there's no, there's no other spots in this car that you see it other than right here. So I'm gonna ding it a little bit, but ultimately for what I would pay for this car, I could well look past that. So let's get into the steering. You've got everything you need. You've got your uh, your cruise control, which has has the part of the 360 deal, which is really nice. Um, all your all your buttons. You've got your your plus minus, your your scan through your your radio functions, and nice. I like that the earbags are getting real small, and they're starting to be able to stylize the steering wheels a little bit better. Um, and speaking of stylized, this is a very sporty looking steering wheel. It was it it. This sounds silly, but it's almost like something you might see in the GTR a little bit. Clearly, this is not a GTR, and this is not the same performance steering wheel that you would see in the GTR, but it does have the look and feel with the, the stitched, the stitched uh, simulated leather steering and all that. I really like it. Everything is easy to use. It's, it's, very, it's very nice for the driver. Of course, this is a smaller car, so you're not really reaching out trying to, uh, man, i got to really get to that. You're not going to do that, but... I do like the layout of everything. Uh, easy to use AC, your, your, once again, your heated seats. You got two uh, settings for that, which is nice, especially in your winters. You know, part of this thing too is it's got push button, you know, it's got the key fob. You just push start it and, uh, from your house and you're, there you go. So that's super nice. Always like, like they do, once you push start it, it goes into the last function that the car was. So if you came in, say on a cold night, obviously your heater was probably still on. So when you come back in the morning, you push start it from your house, bam, it's back to where it was. And then once you get in, put your foot on the brake, hit the start button, and it's ready to go. So let's get into the back and uh, check out all the features there. Let's get into the back of this car. As you can see, I have the seat. I'm 5'8", I'm so I'm not the tallest guy, but I'm also not the shortest guy that will get in this car. So the seat's probably in about the middle position. I actually prefer it back just a little bit. So as you can see, you can sit in this car very nicely. Um, would I want to be back here forever? Probably not, because once again, I'm 5'8", and I've got about three inches from my roof, hitting my head hitting the roof of this car. So, you know, probably for your children or whatever, this is the perfect car. Uh, as they grow, you generally grow into a larger car anyway. So this is, if you're starting a family, I would say this is a perfect car to do it. Now, some of the, some of the features this particular SR model has is USB ports. It's got two USB ports back here. And so, once again, if you have kids, they're going to want to charge their electronic devices, so that's really nice. Um, other than that, this is the back seat of a car. You've got cup holders in the doors. There's nothing in the center. It will seat three back here. Uh, seats two comfortably, and you know, I guess if you had the little car seat in the middle, that would work perfect. But other than that, this is the back seat of a Nissan Versa. Now, as anything, trunk space is always important with a vehicle, uh, whether you're carrying your groceries or whatever. You gotta have space in it, right? And the new Versa does that. It's got a big, big, big trunk space. So, also the cool thing with this particular model, you've got an automatic button. Bam, it's open. And then, you've got a lot of space in this thing. I have uh, I was very impressed with the amount of room that you get in this. It's, it's almost, it seems like the size of a full-size car. You could definitely get some golf clubs in here. Uh, you've got plenty of room for all the groceries or whatever. And, um, you know, whatever items you might want to put in the trunk of a Nissan Versa, you've got it. Let's go and look at the side of the car. So as you can see, the side of the car, there, there's lots of cool lines to this. Of course, a lot of it's for aerodynamic reasons, but also you want everything to look aggressive, and I like I like the sharp brakes. Uh, I don't like the old the old generation of uh, Ultima and stuff where it was this kind of smooth, silky break through it, but I like this the more straight lines to it. It, uh, it just appeals to me. You may like the other version better, but with the third generation of Versa, they've really stepped it up and they've classed this vehicle up. And speaking of classing it up, look at the new, uh, the new wheels. These are a 17 inch wheel and uh, very nice. Of course, this being the SR trim, it's the highest trim that you can get. So you would expect the nicest, nicest wheel that uh, Nissan offers. But under this, they've got a 205-50R 17 wheel under it. So that seems to be the standard now. You know, longer the days when I was a kid, you would get a 13, 14 inch wheel under these things. So longer, those days are long gone. So, uh, but it, it does fit the car and it doesn't feel overly too big. It, uh, it just seems to fit it and makes it a nice classy, you know, classy look. Of course, you're getting drum brakes in the rear, you're getting disc in the front. Um, 
other than that, they're putting a nice Continental tire on this particular model. Um, what more can you say? It, it looks really nice for what, what you're getting. So let's move to the engine. So here you have it, the little 1.6 liter uh, four cylinder inline four. Um, pretty simple, 122 horsepower. It has a 10.4 to one compression. And uh, they've done a lot with this. They've, uh, they've spray coated the, the cylinders, um, the piston rings, everything's been in, they're trying to get as much miles out of these cars as they can, make it everything as smooth as possible. So, you know, the engine's pretty tech filled if you think about it. So pretty easy. If you're a handy person, you wanna do everything yourself, like change your, your fluids or whatever. So you got your windshield wiper fluids, if you need to top off your radiator fluids. Uh, the battery, how easy is that battery to look to get out of there? If you're a handy person, that'd be pretty easy. The air filter, once again, everything seems to be laid out very handy in this car because it is a, it's a simple car. There's no need to kind of tuck everything and hide it. Um, there's actually lots of room in this thing. It's like they almost could have put a V6 in this little thing, but I don't think that would ever be down the, in the plans. But as you can see, pretty easy if you if you get to the hundred thousand miles you need to change your plugs one two three four pretty easy the cool packs here pretty easy checking your your fluids there's your oil the alternator looks like it'd be pretty easy to get to as well so there you have it that is the 1.6 liter versa engine as you can see you get into the car everything it automatically tells you with you have the key on you to put your foot on the brake and here's your push start bam once it comes up, obviously it gives you your, your little display of your car, which is pretty cool. And then it brings up a few features. Once again, the seating position of this car is real nice. I, I do like the layout. The only kind of bummer of smaller cars is generally you can't see where the front of the bumper is. Luckily this has parking sensors. So when you come up to things, it will let you know, hey, you're getting a little close or you know, you, you let you know you do have more room. Um, I do like the, the layout of the radio. Um, this has XM, you know, radio. It has the Apple CarPlay, and uh, obviously all your basic things: Bluetooth for phone, you know, everything you would need now in a car. Once again, here's your your switches for your uh, heated seats, your AC, you and just your temperature AC. There's your uh, for the speed of it, and pretty good. You've got one USB port here, which uh, helps you hunk, if you want to use that for the Apple CarPlay. Or you can Bluetooth the Apple CarPlay. You've got one AUX here for extra charging or whatever you might need. You've got actually an AUX input jack in case you're old school like that. The SR trim does come with uh, this armrest. It's it's one of the features to it. I find it handy even though I do find it's a little goofy, the shape of it. I find it handy because when I'm driving, I generally like, I, I'm just, I don't know, maybe I want to feel sporty or something, but I generally like just having a very good way to grab. You know, grab the, the shifter not that this is a sports car by any means but it's just how i generally drive um i do once again like this the the steering wheel of this car i think it's a it's a home run i think just the layout of it and it's not anymore like you can do a ton with a steering wheel but i love all the the functions of of everything whether whether it be you're wanting to set your your uh, cruise control and adjust the the automatic braking of it with part of the 360 uh it's, it's all pretty easy when you're driving um and as far as line of sight, you've got a nice line of sight. You can look down quickly when you're making your adjustments and everything else is great. Uh, you can go through uh, all your, your, uh, your tech. You've got your driver's assistance. You can adjust, the, you can displays, you can adjust. Uh, vehicle settings, TPMS settings, maintenance. It lets you know all these things, which is really nice. You can scroll through. I, I do like the little, the little tack to it. Not that... Not that not this is a race car once again, but I do. It's just fun to every once in a while. I want to feel sporty, and you've got the tack you can actually do that with. You go through. There's your radio, your features for your radio in case you're driving. And uh, this is what I'm sure it's handy for many people. I've never found it that it's that much harder for me to look over here than it is to look down when driving. I guess any distracted driving is bad driving, but it's there if you want it. Uh, I do like that it gives you the little average that you're driving at. The kind of the video game feature of these cars anymore is like it gets to be a game of can I make this little dial go further, you know, further west or east there and can I make it get me better mileage? Um, I know in my Titan, only because it's a full size truck, that's between me and my wife. We love to see who can get the better mileage. So that's kind of a fun little feature. And then here's your averages. Right now I'm averaging 28.5. Uh, my average miles speed is uh, 20 miles per hour. And I've put 42 miles on this thing and I'm about to uh, go to Nashville. So 
But speaking of which, let's go to Nashville in this thing and let's go see my buddy JR and uh, see what he thinks of this car. So one of the features I really, really like is, is part of the, the cruise control features. So you hit your cruise control, you hit set, it's at 72 miles an hour right now, and you just take your foot off the gas, Take your don't worry about the brake, and uh, it's going to, I'm setting it to 75, so you can adjust it the distance you want away. So as you can see, I've got it the max distance away, so it's going to stay with traffic up to 75 miles an hour. Now I'm going to take it down to the, the lowest setting so it'll actually get me closer to traffic. But yeah, keep me a nice distance away and, and it's pretty nice. I've used it in heavy traffic like this and you know it, it will slow you down because I'm set, as you can see, I'm set to 75 and we're doing, we're doing uh, just a tick over according to this. But it's keeping me with the flow of traffic and uh, nothing to worry about. So, and the braking feature of it, I will say it's a little freaky at first. Just is a you know, control issue of not putting your foot on there and trusting it. But in this situation, it's very, very nice. Let's see if we can get it, uh, we're coming up some slower traffic. So I can feel it braking. As you can see, it's slowed me down. It's keeping me a nice safe distance away from the vehicles. And it, look, it's really braking. So that is a super nice feature. So let's get out of this, get out of this traffic here and see if it speeds back up. Yep, you can feel it accelerating. And it's taking me back up to my 75 miles an hour. So I really, I've really enjoyed my time in this vehicle. I think it, it's a fine driving vehicle. Uh, you know, once again, it is a commuter car and it doesn't try to pretend that it's not except for when you look at it, it, it the interior and everything is a uh, it's very nice especially for the SR package if I was gonna buy one I'm probably gonna jump to the SR package just because I like the little bit of trim I mean yeah you're getting some plastic pieces and stuff but you still you get the nice look of a uh, kind of a high-end vehicle you know it used to be Lambo or any of these were doing the stitching in the steering wheels and in the dash and now it's kind of become standard it seems like across the board that all cars need to do that I've uh, I can't say enough for this little car though for the price point of it. It, it handles well. It's got the electric steering. Would I, I like something that's a little more responsive or you can feel the road a little better? Sure, but that's the wave of the future, man. With all this self-driving car technology that's coming down the pipeline, uh, it's gonna be all, you know, all electric. So it is what it is. Um, I can take that though because it's such a nice vehicle and it's quiet. Um, like I showed you the gauges and stuff everything the layout of this vehicle is super nice and I've really really enjoyed my time in it um, I think for the the price range I think this is is a bargain for everything you're getting this vehicle is a nice bargain so there you have it this has been our review of the Nissan Versa the 2020 Nissan Versa SR edition um, I find this to be a nice car is it a great car no but it's not trying to be a great car it's just trying to be a practical car that has tech and everything you'd want on the inside get you to point A to B and it does it with a lot of fuel economy. So would I own this car if I needed a commuter car? If I was traveling 30 to 60 miles a day for work? Yeah, definitely would use this because why, why put a lot of mileage on your nicer vehicle when that, this is what this is built for. This is built for a first time buyer or a buyer that just wants, you know, to not tear up their vehicle, but just put something miles on something that's not as expensive as say a Maxima would be. So uh, for 21K in this particular model, I'd buy it all day long. I'm sure you could find it just slightly cheaper if you're a local dealer. Um, a lot of tech in this car, Apple CarPlay, the safety shield, let those things alone make this car their true value. I don't think you're gonna find anything like it in the price range. And uh, with it starting out at 14K for a five speed, man, that would be that would be a fun little ride. And maybe the maybe the tuner scene can get a hold of this car one day and uh, figure something out. You know, a little 1.6 liter. Um, I bet you could fit a turbo or something fun under it. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Tell us what you think of uh, the Nissan Versa. Is it is it is it on your list of a commuter car or what is on your list? Let us know. Pop it down there. And so from all things Nissan here in Middle Tennessee to wherever you watch us here on YouTube, this has been your Nissan Nation podcast review of the 2020 Nissan Versa.